chocolate owes its very existence to the cocoa bean. The ancient civilizations of Mexico and Central and South America cultivated cocoa to make drinks. But it wasn't until 1847 that a British company invented solid chocolate. And about time too. This factory makes chocolate in various forms and sells it to companies which manufacture chocolate products. It also supplies chocolate components, such as cocoa powder and cocoa butter. Most of the cocoa beans arriving here come from West Africa, which grows 70% of the world's crop. A conveyor belt moves them through a cleaning system, a series of sieves which screen out twigs, stones and other debris. Next up is a micronizer, a revolving drum which heats the cocoa beans to loosen their shells. Then they enter a shell removing machine called a winnower. Inside, the beans are dragged across screens, pulling off large pieces of shell. Then a vacuum sucks away the remaining smaller pieces. Removing the shell exposes the inside of the cocoa bean, which is called the nib. The factory will roast the nibs to develop their flavor. Over 50% of the nib is fat. This part is cocoa butter. To make chocolate, they'll combine processed nibs, cocoa butter and sugar. They'll add milk powder if they're making milk chocolate. First, the factory processes the nibs by grinding them. The heat and friction activates the cocoa butter, producing pure liquid chocolate, called chocolate liquor. The company adds other ingredients in various proportions, depending on what chocolate they're making. Dark chocolate, for example, calls for more chocolate liquor, but no milk powder. The recipe for unsweetened chocolate contains no sugar. A mixer blends the ingredients to the consistency of a very thick cake batter. The flavor is fine, but the coarse texture needs to be smoothed out. So the chocolate moves to a refining machine, passing between a set of five rollers. These reduce the particle size so much that within just minutes, the chocolate leaves the refiner as a fine dry powder. But now it needs to be liquefied again. So the next stop is a machine called a conch. Friction and heat once again activate the cocoa butter, returning the powder to a liquid state. At this point, they add more cocoa butter, enough to reduce the viscosity to the exact thickness they need. A different amount is needed for making chocolate chips than if they're making a thin chocolate coating. For chocolate chips, the conch feeds a machine called a drop depositor. This deposits drops of chocolate onto a conveyor belt. Different sized nozzles can produce various sizes of chips or other chocolate shapes. The chocolate chips, still warm and soft, enter a cooling tunnel traveling for about five minutes through several temperature zones, which vary between 10 and 15 degrees Celsius. At the end of the tunnel, they have cooled and hardened. A conveyor belt then takes them through a metal detector, which is a standard food safety precaution. The factory also produces four and a half kilogram bulk chocolate bars. A depositor fills bar-shaped plastic molds. The conveyor transfers them to an elevator system. This moves them through a cold room for about two hours. This constant motion ensures air circulation, helping the cooling process. Chocolate shrinks slightly as it cools so the bars pop out of the molds easily. To make the chocolate look as good as it tastes, the factory cools, then reheats the liquid chocolate before depositing it. This process, called tempering, promotes the growth of the most stable cocoa butter crystals. This makes the chocolate look smooth and shiny, and good enough to eat. <laughs>